I first met Samuel Beckett in 1961 in Paris, where my play, The Caretaker, was being produced. He came into the hotel walking very quickly indeed. He had a very sharp stride and quick handshake. It's extremely friendly. I'd known his work for many years, of course. But it hadn't led me to believe that he'd be such a very fast driver. He drove his uh, little Citroen from bar to bar throughout the whole evening. Very uh, quickly indeed. We were together for hours, and we finally ended up in a place in Les Halles, where eating onion soup at about four o'clock in the morning. And I was by this time overcome with, through I think, um, alcohol and tobacco and excitement, um, <clears throat> with indigestion and heartburn. So I lay down on the table. I could still see the place. When I looked up, he was gone. As I say, it was about four o'clock in the morning. I had no idea where he had gone, and he remained away, and I thought perhaps this has all been a, a dream. I think I went to sleep on the table, and about 45 minutes later, the table jolted, and I looked up, and there he was, and he had a package in his hand, a bag. And he said, uh, I've been over the whole of damn Paris to find this, and I finally found it. And he opened the bag and gave me a tin of bicarbonate of soda which indeed work wonders. Some time ago, I, a friend of mine showed me a letter I'd written to him in 1954, when I was 24, in fact. I'd forgotten about it. It was about Beckett, and I'd like to read a paragraph from that letter. The farther he goes, the more good it does me. I don't want philosophies, tracts, dogmas, creeds, way outs, truths, answers, nothing from the bargain basement. He is the most courageous, remorseless writer going. And the more he grinds my nose in the shit, the more I'm grateful to him. He's not fucking me about, he's not leading me up any garden, he's not slipping me any wink, he's not flogging me a remedy or a path or a revelation or a basin full of breadcrumbs. He's not selling me anything I don't want to buy. He doesn't give a bollock whether I buy or not. He hasn't got his hand over his heart. Well, I'll buy his goods hook, line, and sinker because he leaves no stone unturned and no maggot lonely. He brings forth a body of beauty. His work is beautiful. Well, I wrote that um, about 36 years ago and I feel exactly the same now. I think that in the quite remarkable uh, range of his work, the, possibly his major achievement uh, was the trilogy that he wrote in the 50s, the three great novels, Malloy, Malone Dies, and The Unnameable. This is the end of The Unnameable. I see nothing. It's because there is nothing. Or it's because I have no eyes, or both. That makes three possibilities to choose from. But do I really see nothing? It's not the moment to tell a lie. But how can you not tell a lie? What an idea. A voice like this, who can check it? It tries everything. It's blind. It seeks me blindly in the dark. It seeks a mouth to enter into. Who can query it? There is no other. You'd need a head. You'd need things. I don't know. I, I look too often as if I knew. It's the voice does that. It goes all knowing to make me think I know, to make me think it's mine. It has no interest in eyes. It says I have none or that they are no use to me. Then it speaks of tears. Then it speaks of gleams. It is truly at a loss. Gleams. Yes, far or near. Distances. You know, measurements. Enough said. Gleams as at dawn, then dying as at evening, or flaring up, they do that too. Blaze up more dazzling than snow for a second, that's short. Then fizzle out, that's true enough. If you like, one forgets, I forget. I say I see nothing, or I say it's all in my head, as if I felt a head on me. That's all hypotheses, lies. These gleams too, they were to save me, they were to devour me. That came to nothing. I see nothing, either because of this or else on account of that. And these images at which they watered me like a camel before the desert. I don't know, more lies just for the fun of it. Fun, what fun we've had, what fun of it. All lies, that soon said, you must say soon, it's the regulations. The place, I'll make it all the same. I'll make it in my head. 
I'll draw it out of my memory. I'll gather it all about me. I'll make myself a head. I'll make myself a memory. I have only to listen. The voice will tell me everything. Tell it to me again. Everything I need in dribs and drabs. Breathless. It's like a confession. A last confession. You think it's finished? Then it starts off again. There were so many sins. The memory is so bad. The words don't come. The words fail. The breath fails. No, it's something else. It's an indictment. A dying voice accusing, accusing me. You must accuse someone. A culprit is indispensable. It speaks of my sins. It speaks of my head. It says it's mine. It says that I repent, that I want to be punished better than I am, that I want to go, give myself up a victim is essential i have only to listen it will show me my hiding place what it's like where the door is if there is a door and whereabouts i am in it and what lies between us how the land lies what kind of country whether it's sea or whether it's mountain and the way to take so that i may go make my escape give myself up come to the place where the axe falls without further ceremony on all who come from here i'm not the first i won't be the first it will best me in the end it has bested better than me it will tell me what to do in order to rise move act like a body endowed with despair that's how i reason that's how i hear myself reasoning all lies it's not me they're calling not me they're talking about it's not yet my turn it's someone else's turn that's why i can't stir that's why i don't feel a body on me i'm not suffering enough yet it's not yet my turn not suffering enough to be able to stir to have a body complete with head to be able to understand to have eyes to light the way i'm merely here without understanding without being able to profit by it by what i hear to do what to rise and go and be done with hearing i don't hear everything that must be it the important things escape me it's not my turn. The topographical and anatomical information in particular is lost on me. No, I hear everything. What difference does it make the moment it's not my turn? My turn to understand, my turn to live, my turn of the life screw. It calls that living, the space of the way from here to the door. It's all there in what I hear somewhere. If all has been said, all this long time, all must have been said. But it's not my turn to know what, to know what I am, where I am, and what I should do to stop being it, to stop being there. That's coherent, so as to be another no the same i don't know depart into life travel the road find the door find the axe perhaps it's a cord for the neck for the throat for the cords or fingers i'll have eyes i'll see fingers it would be the silence perhaps it's a drop find the door open the door drop into the silence it won't be i i'll stay here or there more likely there it will never be i that's all i know it's all been done already said and said again the departure the body that rises the way in color the arrival the door that opens closes again it was never i i've never stirred i've listened i must have spoken why deny it why not admit it after all i deny nothing i admit nothing I say what I hear, I hear what I say, I don't know one or the other or both, that makes three possibilities. Pick your fancy. All these stories about travellers, about, these stories about paralytics, all are mine. I must be extremely old, or it's memory playing tricks. If only I knew if I've lived, if I live, if I'll live, that would simplify everything. Impossible to find out, that's where you're buckered. I haven't stirred, that's all I know. No, I know something else, it's not I. I always forget that. I resume. You must resume. Never stirred from here. Never stopped telling stories to myself, hardly hearing them, hearing something else, listening for something else, wondering now and then where I got them from. Was I in the land of the living? Were they in mine? And where? Where do I store them? In my head. I don't feel a head on me. And, and what do I tell them with? With my mouth. Same remark. And what do I hear them with? And so on, the old rigmarole. It can't be I, or it's because I pay no heed. It's such an old habit. I do it without heeding, or as if I were somewhere else. There I am, far again. There I am, the absentee again. It's his turn again now. He who neither speaks nor listens, who has neither body nor soul. It's something else he has. He must have something. He must be somewhere. He is made of silence. That's a pretty analysis. He's in the silence. He's the one to be sought, the one to be, the one to be spoken of, the one to speak. But he can't speak. Then I could stop. I'd be he. I'd be the silence. I'd be back in the silence. We'd be reunited. His story, the story to be told. But he has no story. He hasn't been in story. It's not certain. He's in his own story, unimaginable, unspeakable. That doesn't matter. The attempt must be made in the old stories, incomprehensibly mine, to find his. It must be there somewhere. It must have been mine before being his. I'll recognize it. In the end, I'll recognize it. The story of the silence that he never left, that I should never have left, that I may never find again, that I may find again. Then it would be he. It would be I. It would be the place, the silence, the end, the beginning, the beginning again. How can I say it? That's all words. They're all I have. And not many of them. The words fail. The voice fails. So be it. I know that well. It would be the silence, full of murmurs, distant cries, the usual silence, spent listening, spent waiting, waiting for the voice. The cries abate, like all cries. That is to say, they stop. The murmurs cease. They give up. The voice begins again. It begins trying again. Quick now, before there is none left. 
No voice left, nothing left but the core of murmurs, distant cries. Quick now and try again with the words that remain. Try what? I don't know. I've forgotten. It doesn't matter. I never knew to have them carry me into my story. The words that remain, my old story, which I've forgotten far from here, through the noise, through the door, into the silence. That must be it. It's too late. Perhaps it's too late. Perhaps they have. How would I know? In the silence, you don't know. Perhaps it's the door. Perhaps I'm at the door. That would surprise me. Perhaps it's I. Perhaps somewhere or other it was I. I can depart. All this time I've journeyed without knowing it. It's I now at the door. What door? What's the door doing here? It's the last words, the true last. Or it's the murmurs. The murmurs are coming. I know that well. No, not even that. You talk of murmurs, distant cries. As long as you can talk, you talk of them before and you talk of them after. More lies. It would be the silence, the one that doesn't last. Spent listening, spent waiting for it to be broken, for the voice to break it. Perhaps there's no other. I don't know. It's not worth having, that's all I know. It's not I. That's all I know. It's not mine. It's the only one I ever had. That's a lie. I must have had the other, the one that lasts. But it didn't last. I don't understand. That is to say, it did. It still lasts. I'm still in it. I left myself behind in it. I'm waiting for me. There. No. There you don't wait. You don't listen. I don't know. Perhaps it's a dream. All a dream. That would surprise me. I'll wake in the silence and never sleep again. It will be I. Or dream, dream again, dream of a silence, a dream silence, full of murmurs. I don't know, that's all words. Never wake, all words. There's nothing else, you must go on. That's all I know. They're going to stop. I know that well. I can feed it. They're going to abandon me. It will be the silence for a moment, a good few moments, or it will be mine, the lasting one, that didn't last, that still lasts. It will be I. You must go on. I can't go on. You must go on. I'll go on. You must say words, as long as there are any, until they find me, until they say me. Strange pain, strange sin. You must go on. Perhaps it's done already. Perhaps they have set me already. Perhaps they have carried me to the threshold of my story. Before the door that opens on my story, that would surprise me. If it opens, it would be I. It would be the silence. Where I am, I don't know. I'll never know. In the silence, you don't know. You must go on. I can't go on. I'll go on. <laughs>